Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Psycho Gold and this is the Psycho Gold videos. Today is the day that we check out the latest episode of Fire Force. It is episode 5, it came out yesterday, and yeah. I was busy watching uh, Avengers Endgame, which is a brilliant film. I'm sure everybody watching this has seen it. And uh, yeah, we watched that last night, so I, there was no way I was coming back to uh, watch Fire Force at like midnight, so... This morning it is. <laughs> so, let's see what this episode has in store for us. The last one was really good. Um, introduced some new people, so I'm curious to see what this one is going to do. Will we get a big infernal to deal with, or will it be about uh, the rest of the Fire Force organization? Will we meet another company? Will we see more of House 5? So many questions. One way to get the answer. Let's freaking go. Three, two, one, go. Oh! Okay, so we're back to this opening. We keep seeing snippets of this nun's background. Oh! We've seen this in the ending, so are we going to see a bit more than just a snippet? God damn, girl! <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> damn, that is the slowest camera for self-taking images. I suppose it at least does give you plenty of time to actually, you know... Be in the right position whereas some of them you do kind of have to like run nah she's freaking me out man with those eyes but yeah doing it in the middle of like the fire station with everything open you'd think they'd at least have a door that she could shut yep that was a uh, yes but i'm not talking to you about it goodbye now <laughs> hinky i think you i think you meant to, to say kinky there <laughs> He's supposed to be a normal guy, but I swear he's like superhuman. Yeah, Arthur is definitely an idiot. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, raising your gun for that is, uh... Yeah, I was gonna say, that's like a fairly dangerous thing to decide to do. Oh, okay, so it's, it's rubber bullets, obviously, but even so... Oh! Okay, that's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> yes! I'm glad the lieutenant called him an idiot, because he is. He's driving me mad. Oh. Well, he's still alive then. And uh, not having a very good time of it. Yeah, what was I saying about mental health issues? That's not the sister, is it? Flip it out. There's terrified of her. Yeah, I can see why. Oh, I'm trying to remember now. At the end of the last episode, there seemed to be something between the, our sister and her. But I kind of didn't really put much stock in it. I just thought she was reacting to her because she didn't, you know, she didn't like her or whatever. But now I'm beginning to think maybe I should have read more into that. Is that her? Are they the same person from the flashback we keep seeing? I mean, if it is, how did she survive the flames? Yeah, she was staring at her like she was angry, but it wasn't just annoyance it was something more the sister has stepped out it seems she was acting weird to begin with in inverted commas oh that's interesting she let her in so i'm gonna say that that confirms that they do know each other oh whoa what the um okay window dressing what the hell so she's got a really warped perception about all of this. I find it interesting how specific her flames burnt her clothes as well. Wait, she classes herself as a devil? So is this what's happened to her as a result of the fire? Or was she the cause of the fire? I like the fact he's wearing his company 8th uniform as well. Like, they're not even trying to be subtle about it. It's like, yep, this is a flat out fight between the two of them now. Well, I mean, the 5th wanted this fight. When they thought they had him outnumbered. So let's see if they've still got spines when it's them on the offensive. So the lieutenant being a second gen pyrokinetic is something I'd have never guessed. Oh, this should be interesting. The lieutenant is absolutely terrifying. So let's see what he can do against other people. Oh, he has a sniper rifle. <laughs> what the? He has so many guns. <laughs> And he's trained 
Wow. He's like he just came out of a Chow Yun Fat movie, man. Or John Woo, depending on your preference. But So, he's actually more interested in this side of it than he is the actual Fire Force side of it. That's interesting. Yeah, alright, Arthur. Do something useful and you can say stuff like that about him running away. That's the Infernal from the previous episode, isn't it? Are they training it and forcing it to fight them? Is he, could he not think of a decent way to finish that sentence? Is that what just happened? I can't help but notice that all of the Fire Force seems to be far more equipped for destruction than rescue operations, you know? But she's military, and I'm guessing he must be as well from the training he's got. Wait, is he going to curve the bullets? Because they've got gunpowder in them. Oh, that's cool. He also looks even more freaking terrifying with his eyes lit up like that. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> okay, the lieutenant might be my favorite character. I'm not going to lie. This lieutenant man, he's like a one-man army. Never mind John Wick. Oh. Oh, are these the, the, uh, their sisters? Have they just made it, you know, given it extra power? And he wants to kill people anyway, so... Idea as far as he's concerned. I don't fucking know what Arthur's talking about, guy. Arthur just talks a lot of crap. I mean, he keeps smiling, so I'm kind of expecting this to all be part of some strategy that he's using, but I'd be lying if I said I could see what it is. Wow. That's one way of putting it. Some people do get out of the zone someday, and they're just not as good as they normally are. There we go. Oh, no, he still didn't do any better. Right. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say that uh, you could just kill him if you want. There's no need to make him suffer, but, you know. How would you not notice that? Unless he's ambidextrous. I don't imagine you could... Oh, nah, sorry. Nah, nah. That doesn't work for me at all. Unless he is that brain dead, which, let's face it, Arthur definitely appears to be. Yeah, cool. He killed the Inferno, whatever. How can you not know that you're holding something in your less dominant hand? Well, the angels weren't anywhere near as big of a threat as they kept trying to pretend they were in the last episode. But how many, like, how big is the fifth's complement of staff? You know? The eighth has, like, a handful of people. The fifth seems to have an army. Oh, you. I miss the days when things would say part one in the episode title, and you'd know that was going to happen. Well... There you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, Fire Force in its entirety. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, guys. I'm, uh, I'm just a bit lost. Like, there's just so much fun stuff happened in that episode. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, it's one of those episodes where I think the reaction is going to be more entertaining than the review in this one. So first things first, the obvious revelation is the sister and the fifth captain being previously uh, friends slash members of the same nunnery. And it looks like they had a pretty good relationship once upon a time and now they don't. The other revelation that I'd say was really cool is the fact that the lieutenant, who I thought didn't have any powers is actually a pyrokinetic same as Maki. He's a second gen. And uh, something I should also say is that someone told me in the comment section that I was thinking of generations in the wrong context. They are not generations in terms of to be a third gen. They are not the son or daughter of a second gen and the second gens are not sons or daughters of first gen. The the generations are actually a type of categorization in the same way that you would categorize someone who could control fire powers as a pyrokinetic and ice powers as a cyrokinetic if they existed in this world because obviously typically we would call them pyromancers and cyromancers but they decided that the powers are psychic so kinetic i get what they're going for um I gotta say, the lieutenant's powers, now that we've seen him against people, they're pretty cool. 
And uh, I actually think he could be much more effective against Infernals than he has been so far, and maybe he will be in the future. Um, I think it's just a case of he didn't need to go all out because there he wasn't considering the situation dire enough for him to basically need to do stuff. He was relying on his rookies. He was telling them to get the job done. He was training them. That's what he needed to do, which makes complete sense. Even in this episode, he said, you know, it will take more than this to take down my rookies. So I think there is definitely a side of him that has that kind of uh, proud, almost not protectiveness, but yes, he is protective. But it's more, it's more sort of like that subtle, you know, I don't need to step in here because these guys have been trained by me, by our unit, and they're good enough to stand on their own two feet. They don't need me hovering over them. And he keeps them in line. But when it comes down to fighting and to work alongside them, he is very, very dangerous. As I've been saying since episode one, he is absolutely terrifying. But in this episode, he showed it. He is just a master of guns. He clearly is trained in martial arts. And then right at the end of his segment, we saw that he could do a lot more with his pyrokinetic abilities than he's let on so far. With the ability to basically control the bullets after it leaves the gun, he can home in. And that amazing trick he did with the ricochet bullets and then just peppering the other guy that was uh, sending out those bombs, that was great. I mean, Maki is supposed to be the former fire soldier, but she said that she doesn't like fighting other people, which also makes her very much susceptible to not going all out. Whereas the lieutenant's the other way around. He does what he needs to do in order to keep people safe from Infernals, but this seems to be what he's actually got his uh, passion in, is trying to solve the mystery and take down the corrupt firehouses. And as he said in the episode, this is pretty much what he lives for, which is going around and putting everybody back in check. And that doesn't really surprise me, given the way we've seen him act in his own firehouse. Um... I really want to know where Obi is in all of this, though. Is he talking to somebody else higher up in Fire Force? Is he getting back up? Or is he sneaking into the 8th in another direction, trying to go straight for the captain himself? Because obviously he doesn't have any firepower, so unless he's got some really cool tech, I don't know how he's going to be able to match her, because the 5th captain is a lot scarier than I gave her credit for in the previous episode. I mean, she clearly had a very dominating personality and she has everybody at the 5th basically wrapped around her finger or under her heel. Uh, but seeing her in this episode, I can see why people are so afraid of her because we saw her take down Shinra in the last episode without any issues. But in this episode, we saw her literally torturing the Infernal and not just... Not just being callous about it. She was flat out enjoying it. She was laughing her ass off at the pain she was inflicting. And now that we've also seen the background that she has as a former sister. And that she is basically completely thrown all that away. Denied it. It doesn't exist. There is no God. I don't think that the way she is is, is natural. I think whatever happened at the nunnery damaged her and this is the way she now is as a result of that and that's why she's abandoned her faith and she has now completely dismissed any usefulness for sisters in the fire force as she flat out told our sister after she nearly burned her clothes off completely which was a bit weird <laughs> i'm not gonna lie like uh i'm not quite sure what she was trying to do did she get angry and she was just lashing out with her powers but then if that was the case why did it only burn away her clothes why didn't it actually burn her um or did she catch herself at the last second i don't know because after she did that she then gave her her coat so it's almost like there's two different parts of her personality a constant conflict with each other the side that used to exist in her might still be in there and then there's the way she is now and I don't think there's that much conflict. I think the way she is now wins pretty much nine times out of ten. But maybe seeing her old life essentially walk up and say, what are you doing? Kind of stirs those old memories. Kind of brings aspects of her personality that she doesn't like anymore. And makes her angry that just, just seeing her can have this effect on her. And she lashed out and she was like, ah, yeah, didn't really mean to do that. Uh, that was a bit daft. But then obviously she turned it around and said that actually she's going to use her to lure the 8th there. 
Not that she actually needed to do that because the 8th had already decided that they were going to attack the 5th and try and figure out what was going on there. So that actually was an unnecessary. So a thing that I can't get out of my head is the idea that she, the 5th captain, might have been responsible for what we keep seeing at the end credits with the nunnery, with all of the other sisters on fire. Now, she's clearly a very strong pyrokinetic. She could do things that we haven't seen anybody else do yet, and the way she's able to manipulate fire is completely different from Shinra's. If she wanted spontaneous combustion to happen to someone, and if she wanted someone to burn, as we saw in this episode, she is more than capable of making that happen without blinking. You know, she practically fried our sister. Uh, she didn't do any real damage, but if she had, we'd essentially have had a scene that's identical to what we see in the end credits with all of the other sisters sat there on fire. Now... The way we've seen Infernals in this show up until now, they don't really appear human anymore. They always have a change of appearance, but the nuns that I remember uh, from the previous endings before they decided to just make it black, um, they still looked human to me. They looked like they were humans on fire. Now, they were just kind of sat there chilling, which confused me to no end, but if they were trapped by her the fifth captain's powers like shinra was in the last episode where she like heated the air around him and he was like literally unable to do anything he just collapsed that's a terrifying thought that that could have been all of them you know that they were literally unable to move they couldn't breathe and then you know she just roasted him alive and i'm like that's horrifying uh, and even if it's not the case, even if it actually was the work of Infernals, it's still horrifying. Uh, but I am curious as to why this other sister survived. We know that our sister... I've got to learn their names because this is getting really confusing to keep track of. We know that our eighth sister wasn't in the room and when she saw what was happening, she left and ran. And that's how she survived. But how did the, the fifth captain stay alive? I'm really curious to know if we might get an answer to that in the next episode. As for the other part of this episode, which was the Night King, um, as I pretty much said in the episode, I'm sorry. If I pick this up in my right hand, and then I put it down, and then I pick it up in my left hand, I am not going to make the mistake of thinking that I can throw this with my left hand better than I can in my right hand. It's the same with a fork. Um, I... I I just don't believe for a second that he could pick up his sword and not realize that he's doing everything with his left hand because it would feel different. It would feel awkward for starters if he always does it with his right hand. And I'm just, I just, that's the most stupid thing I've ever heard, basically. I, I really, really, really am struggling with that. Um... There's a line in a Bleach episode, um, I can't think of the character's name, I want to say, it was, is it Satoichi? Um, I haven't watched Bleach in a long time. And uh, I remember the specific episode where he's losing and he's dying. He's the guy with a, an eye patch that he doesn't actually need, it contains his power. Um, and he has a sword, and he's fighting this uh, hollow, and he's losing badly. And he comes to the realization that this an opponent might actually be strong enough to kill him and if he doesn't change his uh style he's gonna lose so he remembers the only lesson from his master that makes sense which is if you hold a sword with two hands it's stronger than if you hold it with one and then he basically kills the thing in one swing after he holds it with two hands and his power is ridiculous when he you know uses both arms now in the cut that context the way that the episode executed it that was cool this this was not that this was me hating arthur's character even more than i already did currently i do not understand why arthur is even there now if you're an arthur fan that's absolutely fine i'm not saying that you can't be but i am not <laughs> maybe he will change my mind later in the show maybe you're not supposed to like him yet i don't know when he first turned up i thought he was going to be shinra's rival I don't understand how this guy could be anybody's rival uh, at the moment. I don't even understand how this guy is cleared for duty. I swear to God, he has mental health issues because 
what I thought was just a cute thing that he was doing by pretending everything is like a knight. He answers the phone like he thinks he's Arthur Pendragon. He was treating those things on the roof, the birds, like they were griffins. And he doesn't listen to the orders of the lieutenant like everybody else does. Like Shinra was the one that got shot, even though Arthur isn't even paying attention and he's like trying to hunt the freaking birds. And I don't know, man, every episode he's just gone downhill in my book. Like he didn't listen to the orders of the captain about keeping his sword at bay, but neither did Shinra. But Shinra didn't argue with the captain. Whereas Arthur was like, this sword is my identity. I won't hide it no matter what. And the only thing that he has done that I liked is he realized that hiding the sword is something that he has to do. And he chose to do that when he spoke to the survivors of the Infernal's victims stroke family. But that hasn't changed him. You know, he hasn't grown. He is such... I was trying to think of what to say, and what I was going to say is a kid, and I'm like, no, that's not what I mean. But no, that is exactly what I mean. He is a kid. He is like a five-year-old kid who is still imagining that he is fighting knights and dragons, and there is nothing wrong with that. I have absolutely no issue with people who have high, vivid imaginations. I have one. It's why I like reading. It's why I like anime. But at the same time, you can't be that way in the middle of a mission and if you're being relied upon to save people's lives and be in a serious organization like Fire Force, I am really struggling with his character at the moment. But like I said, he might grow on me, he might change, I don't know. We'll find out as I keep watching the series. But either way, that's going to be it for this one. I think I've covered the three main things I need to cover. Everything else was just incredibly, incredibly gorgeous fight sequences and I freaking loved it. So that's it for me guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of it. If you would like to give it a like as well, it would be most helpful as YouTube right now is having a bit of a heart attack about the fact that my channel is actually uploading decently again. And uh, it is slowly but surely starting to put my videos back into recommendations. But some more comments and some more likes would definitely help convince YouTube that yes, I am actually here and I am alive. <laughs> And speaking of, if you are new here, if this is your first time, then consider subscribing to the channel. Fire Force and Vinland Saga are the two shows I am currently reacting to that are happening live, but there are many other anime and many other reaction videos that I put up, and occasionally I do do just a pure review video. In fact, there's probably going to be one soon thinking about it. So yeah, if any of those things sound cool, subscribe and you'll get notified when new stuff comes your way, man. But that really is going to be it. So as always, guys, my name is Psycho Gold and I will see you in my next video. Psycho Gold, out.